Okay, welcome to the Wrestler's Grind podcast, episode 13. I'm your co-host, Hunter. And I'm your host, Adolfo. Yes, sir. Hey, man, we've had a lot of cool stuff going on. Oklahoma State, Zane Rutherford, Spencer Lee qualifying for the Olympics. Maybe some drama with uh, Aaron Brooks that we'll talk about. Um, how we doing today? As always, we got to start with that. Well, I'm doing good, man. A lot of news within the wrestling community, so... I'm glad to be back on the pod. Yes, sir. Let's just talk about uh, David Taylor and uh, Thomas Gilman, Oklahoma State, Jimmy Kennedy, um, Dayton Fix with the RTC. Um, yeah, what do you think about them joining David Taylor as his staff? Yeah, we were just making all these assumptions of who's going to be joining David Taylor at Oklahoma State, and yeah, his brother-in-law, Jimmy Jimmy Kennedy will be joining him, and Thomas Gilman also. So, um, and also during the press conference, David Taylor announced that Gilman and Taylor will be retiring. Yeah, crazy man. I mean, Gilman, just you know, another legend, right? And it's just so crazy that uh, David Taylor has him joining, and really cool as well that. Um, Dayton Fix is going to be coaching the RTC, like kind of taking over that program. So it's cool to see David still involving some of those, uh, you know, an OSU legend like Dayton. Um, and then what did you think about his uh, press conference, David Taylor's? I thought it was very well done. Um, I think he said a lot of the right things, talked about uh, what what he sees in the future for Oklahoma State, Talks talked about – you know, values, family. It was kind of funny. He talked about uh, him and his uh, wife back in the day. They wrestled at, uh, I believe, Tulsa Re- Nationals or Tulsa Arena. Or, yeah, yeah, they had wrestled, and he's like, and I pinned her. <laughs> so <laughs> that was kind of funny. Um, talked about how, um, you know, how he used to, how he wrestled, you know, in Oklahoma, some tournaments as a kid, and I thought it was really very, uh, very good, man. Uh, it was it was really cool to just see him uh, get up there and talk, and then see uh, you know Oklahoma State alum, um, you know supporting him. Uh, John Smith was there. We saw a picture of John Smith and Thomas Gilman shaking hands. So uh, it was a cool cool thing, man. Yeah, man. I, you know what? Like, I should have known that David Taylor would be really good on the mic because he's done some commentary and stuff before, but. I mean, he just got up there and talked for like 30, 40. I don't know. It was long. I watched the whole thing. It was great. But, um, yeah, just really uh, a really good speech, like you said. Like, had his game plan together. And, man, got some good coaches. So, they're going to be – I really hope that we see them, you know, top five, top three here in a couple of years. I know, like we said, it's too hard to, to br- predict right now. But I'm sure – I'm sure we'll see it. Um but, side note, we were talking about Andrew Ramirez as well. Do we see him going to Oklahoma State, possibly? Ooh, I don't know, man. And you think about um, a guy that's also in the portal that had visited uh, visited uh, Oklahoma State, White Hendrickson. Like, he was, you know, in the process of, you know, looking at Oklahoma State while this all this is going on. So, who knows what go, what's going on with his decision there, but... He went on uh, Bashmania, uh, Justin Bash's podcast, and talked about how he's going to announce, I believe, May 20th, May 21st, some, somewhere around there, of where he's going to go. And I think he said he, he's he got two more visits. And I think he didn't say it on the pod, but I'm just going to assume that it's Mizzou and Michigan. Yeah. I hope he goes to Oklahoma State. I don't know. I just think that would be a good fit for Wyatt Hendrickson. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so would Alirius, man. Could you imagine if the first two things that Taylor does is pick up both of those guys? If he picks up one, that would just be freaking crazy. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think uh, David Taylor going there has kind of made me an Oklahoma State fan now. You know what I mean? I always liked them, and I always, you know, back in the day when Jordan Oliver was there, I was a, a big fan and, and whatnot. But, you know, I guess throughout the past, like, eight years, I hadn't really been as big of a fan. But now David Taylor's there. I'm like, well, shoot. 
<laughs> I feel like I have to now. Like you have to root for David Taylor. You can't root against him. Um, uh, we said someone else. Um, uh, that uh, Darian uh, was it Lockett? Oh, D Lockett. D yeah. Lockett. Yep. Yeah. What's the news with him? Uh, uh he's gonna stay at Oklahoma nice. State. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's was that was um the first thing that uh, David Taylor did was contact. Dayton Fix and D Lockett, making sure that they would stay at uh, Oklahoma State. Heck yeah! But it's a it's in a very important thing for David Taylor to build up the RTC. It's going to be interesting to see who he uh, brings in. I mean, right now Dayton fifty seven kilo, who's the sixty five seventy four does does Dake instead of Dake coming to Oklahoma State to coach, does Dake go to Oklahoma State to train? You know, that is interesting. But I would assume he's going to stay at Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. I, I mean, would assume. I mean, he's already been training there. That like He's used to that environment. And, you know, the Olympics are coming up. I don't – I mean, I know David Taylor was like his primary training partner, so he could. Well, I'm I mean, sure he'll go visit him. Well, I mean, like after this, oh, you know, the Olympics, mm-hmm. um, I, th- I think one of the biggest reasons why he did go to, you know, Penn State – the Lindy Line Wrestling Club was because of David Taylor. Yeah, yeah, man, I could see it happening now that, that you're saying it. Um, wouldn't that, that? Yeah, that would be wild if he got Dake to coach too. So you have Dayton Fix, fifty-seven kilo. Imagine having Andrew Alirez, right, sixty-five kilo. Kyle Dake, seventy-four kilo, eighty-six, ninety-seven, one twenty-five. Who, mm-hmm. who, you know, right there. Th- that's three good. Yeah. Looking, uh, names and uh you know if the rtc is a big thing for david taylor then andrew alaris makes a lot of sense going to oklahoma state because he has freestyle goals yeah for sure man um i I feel like we're gonna see a lot of guys transferring to oklahoma state in the next year or so i just feel like david is gonna bring bring them in i mean who wouldn't who wouldn't want to wrestle for oklahoma state now but um you have any more thoughts about Oklahoma State and David Taylor, Thomas Gilman? Um, only that uh, Jimmy Jimmy Kennedy is the only one out of the three that have a uh, college uh, coaching experience. They have one more spot to fill. Be interesting to see who gets that position. And then they have um, Penn State needs to fill the role of Jimmy Kennedy. So be interesting to see who um, they put as their assistant coach. I don't know. Dake. Yeah, people were that his name was getting thrown around, but I, I think uh, maybe it would be a Penn State guy. Like, I think a good fit would be Nick Lee, Zane Rutherford. Um, you know, it's funny too. We always think whenever we think of you know David Taylor, Kyle Day, Jordan Burroughs, right? You're like, where are they gonna coach one day? Like, people always think that Dake is gonna coach at Cornell. People thought David Taylor was going to coach at Penn State, which maybe he goes back there one day. I don't know. Probably they probably won't <laughs> want him to leave. And then we're like, oh, Jordan Burroughs is going to coach at Nebraska. But I feel like David Taylor kind of, you know, shook things up with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I get what you mean. Everybody just assumes that, you know, these greats are going to go straight into coaching. To their alma mater. Yeah, yeah, and it makes sense. I mean, like, they're freaking successful, and, you know, wrestling has transformed so much in the last couple of years, and these guys definitely understand that, and I think they can go with, um, you know, the times and continue to develop guys. But I think the, um, the, th- the thing is, is... Um, Man, it's just a, uh, you know, David Taylor m- coming to, you know, going to uh, Oklahoma State just causes so much uh, interest into what's going to happen in the Big 12, what's going to happen at Nationals. It's just freaking cool. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? Like, I've just, this is so random, but like, I've always loved Oklahoma State's colors. Maybe because we're from Tennessee and UT wears it orange too. But like, their warm ups are hard. Like, the black with the orange. You know, it says, uh, was it like, I don't even know what it says on it, but, uh, Cowboys. 
Yeah, like Dayton Fix wears it a lot. It's like a old school like track zip up with the uh, you know it doesn't have a hood or anything. It's just like a, a full zip. But anyways, anyways, let's uh let's talk about Zane and Spencer Lee. They're qualified. Yes, sir. They sure are. And I just want to go through this real quick uh, because I just want to talk about who Spencer Lee wrestled. Just if you don't know, because I mean. You really, it's kind of sometimes hard to find these results. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, you go to Flow, the United World Wrestling, they'll have it, but a lot of people don't search it up. So, uh, in his first match, he wrestled a guy named Ben Hatcham, Tarek, uh, from uh, Morocco. Not really much information there. He's 19, but that was his first match. His second match, he wrestled the one seed from China. His name's Zhao Wanhao. And uh, he was a U23 bronze medalist in 2018. Uh, 2021, he was a silver medalist of the National Games of China. And then he's gotten bronze, gold, and silver uh, in some tournaments last year. Uh, and then, you know, Bishkek, Budapest, and Zagreb. So, uh, yeah, you know, accomplished guy. Really solid. He was the one seed. And then he wrestled. Uh, Vladimir Egorov from Macedonia, Russian-born guy. And he won the gold medal in the 57 kilograms at the uh, 22, 2022 European Wrestling Championships in Budapest. So, obviously, you know, great wrestler. And he also got uh, bronze in 2019 European Championships. And then the last guy he wrestled was... Um, Rakat Kalzan from Kazakhstan, who got bronze in the 2023 Asian Wrestling Championships. So that's who he beat in his last match. But um, yeah, th those were the results. Spencer Lee looked great. Um, it's always weird when you see him like get taken down and stuff. You know, like we saw mm -hmm. the China uh, guy. He hit four on Spencer. He was down six to two before he came back. Um, but, dude, Spencer Lee on top is, like, maybe the best in the world uh, at parterre. When he starts, like, hitting gut wrenches and, God forbid, he gets a leg lace on you. Like, it's it, – it doesn't look good, bruv. Um, I don't know why this just randomly popped in my head, but I always thought it would be cool to, you know, whatever – a wrestler's special move is or whatever they're like really like good at right like elite at i always thought it would be cool to have like a series of like getting dake bomb getting ankle picked by david taylor or kill sanderson getting uh you know blast ar doubled by jb yeah getting um arm barred by spencer lee uh, so yeah i just thought you know that was popping in popping up in my head but yeah zane qualifies as well he won two on the front side, and then lost in the round of 16 to, um, uh, is it Mag Magnolia? I forget where, it was his toughest opponent, it was his toughest opponent there, um, forgot who, what that guy's name was, but then he, uh, got pulled back into repechage, and on day two, he had to win four matches to qualify for the Olympics, and it was like, ooh. Dude, that's, that's gonna... brutal. Seven matches just to qualify. Uh, it, that, that's just so messed up, honestly. And the thing, too, is, you know, he has to make weight the second day. Mm. Yeah, and, like, um, oh, did you find – let me know what that guy's name was just because I want to know, too. But, like, I think he's just so crazy. And I think Flo – someone was talking about this. I mean, you know what? It was wrestling mindset. Uh, you know, great kind of mental coach online on Instagram and stuff. Um, but it's just crazy to me that USA, like, like a guy like Zane has to wrestle seven matches in order to qualify for the Olympics. I don't know. Like you just think about the United States, like we should have six guys at each weight, especially when you think about how hard it is to qualify for the U S team. Imagine like you make the Olympic team, and then you don't qualify the way, which, you know, has happened before. We've seen it a lot. But that would just be – that would be the shittiest thing ever. 
you make the Olympic team and then you don't qualify the weight. Are you technically still an Olympian then? I don't. You know, I don't. I think they I think people call you one just because, like, to call you one. Because you made I, the Olympic team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That um, suck. That guy's name was Tolga Tumar Ochir. I don't know how to say all that, but. Oh, Ochir. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. And he was from, uh, he was from Magnolia. Mongolia. Mongolia. <laughs> Magnolia. Magnolia. What am I thinking? You're picking some flowers, man. Um, Mongolia. Did I say that earlier too? Yeah, they're good though, man. Mongolians are. Did they're, I say that they're, earlier? They're solid. Same. I think I think he said Magnolia. Why am I thinking Magnolia? It's oh, because here there, there's a street here in uh, Knoxville, Magnolia Street. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of that. <laughs> Mongolia. Yeah, man. They're solid. They're savage. Like they're really good. They have some of the best wrestlers in the world, and they're good at judo too. But. Um. Yeah, man. So we had them, and let's move on to kind of our last topic, uh, one of our last topics before we just freestyle it. Aha! Uh-huh. I hope you like that pun. But um, Aaron Brooks uh was on a podcast recently. Do we know what the podcast is called? Yeah, Bash Mania from uh Justin Bash. Yes, and I guess he kind of said some controversial things i guess you know i mean we know um aaron brooks is a very devout christian right and i feel like a a lot of the wrestlers in america are great thing right but he kind of said some stuff that i guess people were interpreting as being critical of david taylor Mm -hmm. yeah i mean you go read the comments online on that video as well you know i didn't watch the video for you know five days or whatever and um i was like let me let me go listen it listen to it myself and i mean uh (laughs) it's kind of you know he taught he just talks about um you know his you know the whole process of getting to taylor cutting weight at 2 a.m talking about how that tested his faith and yeah, and I think he, you know, there's just a point where he talks about, you know, if they, they, if they don't believe, if they didn't believe before, I hope they believe now, and I think he's like referencing it to like, you know, all the all the things that he had to go through. Uh, only God could have got him through that. Only God could have got him uh, this victory. So, I I don't know if Taylor. Um, He basically was like, it was a miracle that he beat David Taylor. And then he was like, um, I hope that... Sometimes a miracle brings someone to God. Yeah, and he was saying, I hope that uh, me beating him brings him to God. Or kind of, maybe did he also insinuate that David Taylor lost because he didn't have God? Uh, That's what some people are interpreting it as. Exactly. So that's the thing. Like, But I didn't interpret it that way. I think he was saying, "I hope the loss can bring David closer to God." Which you know, I, I, you know, we're both Christians, and I don't really, I don't know if David Taylor is right, but I guess just some people thought that it was like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not, not like trying to put, because he put says it. David I'm not Taylor trying to down. push my. He's like, I'm not trying to push my beliefs onto anyone. But it almost kind of sounded like that. Yeah, well, I you know, I'm not even sure if it was that really, that. Like I, I didn't think it was like a bad thing. You know, what I mean, uh, maybe he took a little jab at David Taylor for leaving or something. I don't know, but uh, I don't think it was bad as the comments were saying. Because I, from what I was reading online, I just thought he had went off, and I think. I think sometimes in these things, when you're talking about your faith, I think it always it, it can ruffle uh, ruffle feathers. Yeah, if like you're talking about certain topics that are just that that can you know that there are two sides and that there's not a right or wrong. Um, there are topics within religion that I believe are or that 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 are just there's no right or wrong. I mean, some people will believe that they're right because their belief but 
I mean, just yeah, I don't know. I think well, it was just- you know, I, I will say this though. You know, I I do think it is refreshing that Aaron Brooks is willing to just really uh, let his beliefs out because I'm just saying this in America. I just think that um, enough, you know, Christians aren't being as uh, they they aren't like standing up for what they believe in as much. So I do appreciate what Aaron Brooks is doing. You know, just really being a warrior for Christ, let's say. You know what I mean? Um, Because I do feel like in America there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people going away from Christianity or going to church and stuff like that and not living by it as much, Uh, which we're kind of going into a deep dive here. But, you know, I mean, I feel like social media really has affected people's belief and faith uh, I mean, you look at comments on stuff, it just seems like people always, especially Christianity, people criticize it. So, you know, guys like Aaron Brooks, David Carr, um, Keegan O'Toole, I'm sure there's some other ones in there that uh, I, I haven't mentioned. You know, there's a lot, like I said, a lot of Christians, uh, a lot of wrestlers in America are Christians. So, just like how in uh, the Middle East and Russia, you know, a lot of them are Muslim, you know, and... Um, you know, everyone believes in what they believe in, right? But it's good to see people believe in their faith is, is what I'm trying to say. So I, I I think Aaron Brooks maybe caught a little too much flack for for that. Yeah, and I agree with you. I, I do respect that he stands on his beliefs and doesn't, you know, doesn't like, stay quiet or yeah, he doesn't like – Cower oh. away from those questions or anything. Yeah, especially yeah. – you know, he had that um, moment after winning his third NCAA title. The NCAA took down his interview. Yeah, and, that that's what got him in trouble originally, I think. Yeah. yeah, so this is the second time where he's been criticized for what he has said about, you know, his faith. Yeah. No, and, and I, I truly, like, he can say whatever he wants to say. I mean, that's his right to his opinion but we can also talk about it and um say how it's kind of just odd and you go read the comments a lot of people it's like 90 percent of the comments are like negative and there's a couple comments saying like hey good for aaron love that he's sticking to his beliefs but um yeah i just think that there are a couple other people that are taking it a different way yeah you know and um David, I don't know, man. I, I like, I don't know what David Taylor believes in or anything like that. But I, I don't know if using it to to say that like you were right is the best thing. You know what I mean? Um, it's one thing to I talk about. David your, Taylor was a Christian too. Just saying. I mean, it's one thing to talk about your own faith, but then to speak on someone else's. Yeah, you know, because you don't know what they believe. And yeah, what they don't, and. Really. I mean, unless you know, I mean, they are in the room. They were in the room a lot together, so. Yeah, but I still would give Taylor the room to talk about his belief. I mean, I, I just feel like out of respect for someone else's belief, I think you just give them that. Like, you're not speaking on what they, like, I think you respect it. I mean, even if you don't agree with it. And some people, like, keep this stuff private. You know what I mean? Which I respect, too, right? Um, I know a lot of people, once they feel like they have a platform, they're like, you know, I need to get this message out there. But some people like to keep it private. Um, maybe that's the case for David Taylor or, you know, I, I don't know. But I also wonder if he was saying that because David Taylor left, you know. And he does talk about that in the podcast as well, how, you know, he hopes that Taylor go into Oklahoma State uh, was well thought, well well thought through. Like he did, he think it through. Did he weigh his options, or is this just to occupy his time? I thought that was kind of odd too to say, especially when this guy. I get it; he's your opponent, but I mean, he went to Penn State. Like he's yeah, you know, Aaron Brooks had to look up to David Taylor. I mean, he. I'm sure you know they had they exchanged words and stuff after the match and. It seemed very respectful, and it's like, 
Dude, David Taylor is Olympic gold medalist. Like, isn't it crazy though? Like, in these last couple months, I mean, Storacci's always been vocal for the last couple years, right? But the thing with Bo Nickel, Jordan Burroughs, and now you got Aaron Brooks kind of having a thing with David Taylor. It's like these, um, like these Penn, Ke- Penn State guys are having a uh, just, some beef. Yeah, some beef. Yeah, I mean, when you're in a place like that where everyone wants to be the top dog and there's some top dogs there, I could see some, I mean, see that happening, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, you see it at places that aren't, aren't as successful as Penn State. So imagine if you're you're there. So, yeah, uh, interesting topic, you know? Uh, but you know, we felt it was worthy to talk about. Yeah. It was interesting. <laughs> we didn't know yeah. what direction to take it because it's just a topic that is sensitive. I yeah. think in today's world, like you, you can say something and somebody clips it, and you know it's just not a good look. But I mean that that's just part of what today's world is like, and that's why I'm like, I listen to it, I can have my opinion on it, but at the end of the day, it's just like that's his opinion, and I mean he's gonna keep on doing what he what he, what he does. I don't think he changes for anybody. So. Yeah, no, go check that podcast out if y'all haven't seen it. Go watch it and see, you know, make your own opinion and whatnot. Yeah. And um, the last thing about that pod, though, is the Adderall. Oh, yeah. So, he, I guess he had tested positive for Adderall, and people were trying to make it big news. But he, you know, has a prescription for it. He just yeah. didn't bring it to uh, U23s? Yeah, so they said that, um, you know, he said that he just had to show they had the prescription and they had to – like talk to his doctor, something you know, something simple. But the easy crazy fix. The crazy thing was that he wasn't cleared to wrestle at Olympic trials until the Thursday before trials. Yeah. That's what he said, which is crazy, huh? Bruh, wrestling on Adderall though, be wild. Because I, I mean, I, I had, I was prescribed in college. Well, he said it's not Adderall. It's uh, but is it Vivans or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just saying, same thing, same sort of thing. Which I don't know the difference. Uh, uh, they 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 operate the same essentially. They do feel a little bit different though, because I was prescribed both at one point. But dude, when you wrestle on Adderall or Vivance, it is uh, your brain is just operating at a different frequency. Wait, I have think. you? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Like practicing and stuff, or you know, when I was in college, I I was coaching down here, and um, yeah, man, you know. If I went to class or had a test and I took it and then I go coach, I mean, you're just next level, dude. That's crazy. I've always heard people it, like – It can't cons- give you cotton mouth though. Okay. I've heard people consider taking like pre-workout before matches. Oh, no. I've uh, heard that before. No. But I, I don't know about Adderall. That wouldn't really help you too, man, because there's a lot of stuff in pre-workout that I feel like would mess with you while you're competing – uh, especially like anything that is a pump inducer, kind of like like some sort of arginine complex or something. You know, it, it puts the blood into your muscles. And I don't like if you're in a match, you know, and you're using all your strength and you're pushing and pulling and whatnot. Like your muscles will get just filled with blood even faster than they normally do. So okay. that I don't think it would really help your muscular endurance. But things like in my opinion, that I definitely think help when you're wrestling, like off the top of my head, like beta alanine definitely would help. Okay. You know, it, um, it, it helps your muscular endurance. And uh, it, I think beta alanine is a great, great one before, uh, if you were going to take before competing, like if you just took it alone with some Mio or, or something. But um, just like if you were taking C4 or no explode or something, no. Nah. Don't do it. Don't do it, guys. Just drink a, you know, if you if you feel like you need some caffeine, drink something that, like, I feel like a Celsius probably wouldn't be bad or a Jocko Fuel or something. Um, I don't know the ingredients no, on all those. No. <laughs> but, um, man, just drink some coffee. Or if you're prescribed Adderall or something. <laughs> uh, uh. But, I, you know what, man? I never really liked being all – jacked up before a match like i didn't really love drinking coffee or having a god forbid i don't know uh uh energy drink 
or pre-workout. I think I took some C4 one time before a match, like in an off-season tournament, like in a freestyle tournament or something. It just, I did not like it. You know, like, you just, you're you're out of your mind. <laughs> Especially back in, like, the 2012, 13, 14 era. I graduated in 14. That is, um, th- the stuff back then was not checked as well on the shelves. Let's just say that. If you guys remember, comment if you remember uh, the original Jack 3D formula. Like, yeah, it, it, it was it was a different time. Games were being made, huh? Yeah, they were being made. <laughs> um, okay, another topic that I think was cool and random to see was uh, Kamzat Chamayev and Pat Downey. I guess Pat Downey's joined his camp. Yeah, he's up. He's over in uh, Dubai training with him. I, I wonder how that happened. Who knows? Maybe man. Hamzat saw his uh, match with Starachi or something. Very well, yeah. Could that could be the thing? Um, I, who knows how? I, I truly don't know. But it's kind of it was just random. It was just like, is that what I think it is? It's probably uh, it's not. Uh, Pat Downey and Shemaev. Yeah, and I mean it makes sense though. I mean Shemaev probably knows who Pat Downey is. Pat Downey made a world team. You know he. Fought. I think he'll probably fight. I'm sure he'll probably want to fight again sometime. Um. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And they probably have connections and whatnot. But I thought that was cool. Cool to see that uh, they were training together. And he would definitely get better. Uh, Pat Downing would definitely get better uh, striking and stuff with Chamayev's coach. Uh, his his coach is a, a damn good you know striking coach. So okay. We'll love to see it. Love to see it. Pat, go get your bag. Make some money, man. Uh, other wrestlers doing some cool things. Jason Nolf to make his grappling debut. Yes, he is. Um, he's grappling against one of the B team guys. Yep. Right. Uh, I believe that guy's name is Andrew. His name is Andrew. Andrew Simmons. Simmons. Cool. Um, yeah, man, I know Jason Nolf has been, I've seen pictures of him wearing a gi before, probably around the same time Bo started training, so three years maybe. He's So he's probably been training jiu-jitsu some. Uh, I, I mean, not some, I'm sure he's been training a good bit, but uh, I'm sure, dude, his style, the way Jason Nolf is, I'm sure it'll translate to jiu-jitsu very well. Yeah, there was a time where he was just putting out a bunch of, like, training content jujitsu yeah it'll be interesting to see you know man i just think the really the biggest threat for wrestlers going into i guess the new age of jujitsu ankle is the heel hooks and, oh, ankle. and, and ankle locks okay. but but heel hooks specifically just because i mean that i would say it's what tony ramos the, got caught in when the, he did his first first like 10 seconds yeah he'll hook the learning curve for heel hooks is like the technique that it takes um, is similar to some of the finer techniques in wrestling. And, you know, if you're going against a guy who's been doing heel hooks and is a leg lock specialist for, you know, he's been doing them for five years or something, that's going to be pretty tough to deal with. You know what I mean? Um, now, you know, a lot of wrestlers, when they first start training jiu-jitsu, uh, some of their main training points, it's, you know, hey, let's learn how to feel, defend heel hooks because people know that's the biggest threat to uh, wrestlers in, in this day and age. But if you get over that hump, the heel hooks, and learn how to defend them and even start going for them and attacking, you can make some magic happen. How many years have people been doing heel hooks? I thought I seen something online where like it's still like relatively new, but the people that like really focus on it yep. are like so much ahead of other people, and that's why it's like uh, difficult for people to defend. Because um, I'm glad you asked that question okay. because I have an answer. Okay. Um. So John Donaher, Gordon Ryan, you know his head coach. I would say this started with the emphasis on leg locks around 2013, 2013, 14, 15, because 
he had a lot of guys coming to him, like Gordon Ryan, Mickey Ryan, those kind of guys, who wanted to be top of the food chain, wanted to be world champions in jiu-jitsu and transcend the sport. And he was like, okay, well, these guys are blue belts, purple belts, and they're going against the world's top black belts. What's the fastest way to shorten their path, right? And what's a weakness that a lot of people have? And he said, well, heel hooks. So they started training leg locks as a whole, heel hooks, and really emphasizing those. Because back in the day in jiu-jitsu, heel hooks and, mm, yeah, ankle locks maybe, uh, knee bars. Like People viewed going for leg attacks as like cheap, below the belt. You know, it was like, it was just kind of this taboo thing that, you know, uh, you know how when people first started being MMA fans, uh, they just want to see people strike. And when anyone started wrestling, they're like, oh, we just want to see you stand and fight like a man. That was kind of the equivalent in jujitsu uh, with leg locks. You know, people just wanted to see you try to pass the guard and get triangle chokes and arm bars. And if you went for leg locks, people were like, oh, this, you know, this guy's a dirty fighter. Like, this is, you know, BS, whatever. So um, that that is how the emphasis on leg lock started, and I would say it started around that twenty thirteen to twenty fifteen era, um, with the like real emphasis on it. And then the Donaher Death Squad, that was, you know, when John really formed that team with Gordon Ryan, Gary Tonin, Craig Jones, Mickey Ryan, but then. Uh, Nick Rodriguez, he joined uh, probably around 2017. I would say he joined that team uh, around then. So, and then they split. But, anyways, that's my little history on leg locks and how they became more popular. But now they're so dangerous, and it's such a big part of the game that that um, everyone has to learn how to defend it. And, and it used to be a thing where. Uh, gyms really wouldn't start teaching leg locks and heel hooks until around brown belt. That that was just a thing. They didn't even like let you touch it until you're around like brown belt level. Maybe purple belt in some gyms, but now a lot of gyms they're teaching it at white or blue belt, and it's just like a prerequisite, you know. And um, you know, a lot of gyms like the gym that I trained at in Nashville. They were like, "Hey, don't go for heel hooks unless you unless I tell you you can, like until you're cleared, you know, just a safety precaution. You know, if you were like a good high school wrestler and you have control, they'd be like, okay, yeah, man, like work on the heel hooks. Uh, you know, you could work on escapes if you didn't, but you couldn't actively go for them. But uh, like if you were just real like a spazzy white belt and explosive, and you tried to like use muscle out of everything, it'd be like, hey, you can't do heel hooks, yeah. So." Anyways, yeah, man, uh, it is a cool story. But the the cool thing, last last little part about that about leg locks is now in jujitsu, kind of a double whammy scenario. You see more people uh, going for wrestling leg attacks off their back because they'll threaten a heel hook or a straight ankle lock or something, and then they'll like base up onto their elbow and wrestle up. Or they'll, you know, get a, you know, if they're, like, in half guard on their side, they'll get, like, a single leg. You know what I mean? Okay. So, it is cool, man. You see wrestling becoming more important in jiu-jitsu. Uh, and it's kind of a byproduct of the heel hooks. And also, just because more, like, college wrestlers are getting into jiu-jitsu and uh, being on top. You know, if you get on top in jiu-jitsu, they say, stay on top. Uh, general rule of thumb. So, unless unless you're going against like Mikey Musumeci, it's like <laughs> or Gordon Ryan. I mean, oh, Roman was seen training with him. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, man. Oh, those two together will be great because you know uh, RBY can teach him some wrestling stuff, and Mikey can teach him. You know, he's a leg lock specialist. You do not want that guy getting in on your legs at all. Zero. I mean, Gordon too. I mean, Gordon's probably the best in the world at him, and he's six foot two and two hundred and forty pounds. Like, you don't want that dude on your leg. 
No. Craig no Jones, way. Nick Rodriguez, J Rod, uh, Big Dan. Oh, yeah, you don't want those people on your list. That's a fact. Man, Jiu Jitsu. Fun, right? 100%, man. And I'm glad more wrestlers are getting into it. So. Yeah, really interested in seeing where this goes for Jason Ulf. I mean, I think, yeah, I think it's been said before by him that he's. Uh, that he has plans to do MMA. I think this is just getting him on that path. I bet he continues to wrestle. I don't know when he makes that decision to dive in fully uh, to MMA, but... He'd be good. He'd be good, man. Um, oh, I was going to say this, too. What is the guy's name? Um, Muggsy something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's pretty. He's a pretty popular like wrestler. Yeah, he's got like a half a million followers. Yeah, and... You know, I love his story, too, because he's like, dude, I, he was like, I didn't have, like, all these accolades in high school mm-hmm. or whatever. He just loves wrestling, and he's good, too. Uh, he's He has an exciting style, and he said, he, he said this the other day. He was like, I'm going in jiu-jitsu, and I'm going to, he's going to send it. So, yeah, but he's a, he seems like a really cool guy. Oh, yeah. He was uh, at the NCAA Fan Fest and hanging out with kids and wrestling around, and I didn't know that he was there. Um, I went to go see Roman there uh, at the Fan Fest. It was pretty cool. He was doing um, autographs and whatnot. Bro, I got to say this, too. You need people like that. Like I, I, There's nothing more I hate than when you see someone like that and people hate on them because they're like, bro, you didn't wrestle in college or, or I don't know. I'm not even sure if he like, placed at state or something. You know what I'm saying? But I just hate when people, you know, when they hate on someone like that and – uh, but he has a great personality, and you know he's great for the wrestling community and the culture, and and he's good too. And he said, like, man, I've gotten a lot better. Like, people think if you don't wrestle in college that you can't get better after high school. And it's like, dude, he's been coaching and rolling around, and of course he's gotten better. Like, I don't know. I just don't like when people hate on people like that, especially when it's good for the community. On one hand, we're always saying that anybody can wrestle, everyone should wrestle. Um. That it doesn't matter height, weight, whatever, disability, go wrestle. But then other times we're criticizing people for not having all the accolades. Yeah, let, let's talk about that real quick before we wrap up. That's the one thing about wrestling that I personally, it's like, yeah, dude, okay. You, you want to be the best and that is like the peak of the sport is being the best and dominating and trying to win state titles and national titles and whatnot. But, like you said, man, you'll see people, they'll, they'll uh, cheer you on if, if you're doing well, and then when you lose, they come after you. And if you, even if you're pretty good and, you, and you know, you're a guy that places at tournaments or whatever, they'll, they'll still, like, talk shit about you. And, like you said, on one hand, they'll support you. On the other hand, they'll tear you down. I know that's with anything – but in the wrestling community, when people try, like, it's the same people who hate. The same people that hate are the same ones who say, like, if you celebrate after you win, they're like, you need to, like, I don't like that. Like, you need to just, you know, get your hand raised and act like you've been there before and, you know, walk with your head down off the mat and be all humble. It's like, it's just so, it's just so hypocritical, dude. That's one thing I don't like about it. I'm, I'm just saying that. I think a lot of people see that, too. It's like, I think in wrestling you should be authentic, be who you are. I'm not saying be a crazy asshole and be, you know, just making bad decisions, but be yourself and, uh, you know, be exciting. I don't know. And and don't worry about what people say because something like, like Mug, the Muggsy guy or, or whatever, right? Like some people don't start wrestling when they're in kindergarten. Some people don't start wrestling until they're a freshman or sophomore in high school, and they still do pretty well for the time that they've been doing it. There's a lot more people that probably relate to him than they relate to, like, the Jordan Burroughs, the the David Taylors, the the Kale Sandersons. There are more people that don't wrestle uh, in the next level, that don't know, that are not But they still love it. They love it. And and so there are a lot of people. And they can still be good. And it's like, dude, Mm -hmm. if you take someone like, like him or even just a regular, like, average high school wrestler right like maybe they make it to state and don't place or maybe they don't make it to state whatever you put them against an untrained person they're gonna win yeah most of the time 
they're going to win, like, in a fight or something. Like, they're going to win, you know? So, I don't know, man. I just like to see people have more respect for for wrestlers as a whole. And, um, you know, like, you, I've seen dudes. There there was a guy that I knew in high school. He didn't start wrestling until he was a sophomore. But he really uh, – uh, he's still active, so I'm not going to say his name. But he really wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And he was not a good wrestler, straight up. Wasn't. Like, he I, I, he would get pinned a lot. Like, his senior year, he'd get pinned like 30 seconds a lot and stuff like that. But he was an athletic guy, strong guy, whatever. He, he – Well, wait. Uh, 145, 152, right? And uh, he ended up becoming a Navy SEAL. And it's like, oh, you don't think that guy's badass? Like, come yeah. on now. Mm-hmm. It's not all about wrestling. Like, you can take super athletic – I've seen a guy who's a super athletic football player, um, strong, whatever, wrestled for two years, and he got, like, fourth at state or something, you know? But are you going to base how good he was because he only wrestled for two years? No, if he would have started wrestling his whole life, he probably would have won state a bunch of times. So, Mm -hmm. anyways, guys, come on. We got to show some love to the wrestlers and wrestling community. Don't put people down. Build them up because, you know, I mean, that's what champions do, man. They build people up. And I think anyone that is a – if you go look at them and they're – 99% of them who's, are national champions or uh, world champions in MMA and whatnot, they build people up. You know, They believe in others. And they're like, hey, man, you just got to keep working, work hard. They don't put you down. They don't go, oh, you can't do this unless they're a narcissist or something. So believe in yourself. That is the truth right there. It's so. just cool to see that. You know, there's someone, I guess we can call him a wrestling influencer. Yeah. There's not many of those. Yeah, man. And he's he uh, he has a good following, and he's got some swagger, and he puts in the work. So we need people like that. Ooh. I mean, people would say you need people like us who um, cover stuff. And, you know, hopefully, like, we, we want to start getting some content, too, of, like, you know, training with some guys and – um, what not too. So maybe we kind of dip our toes into that as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm excited to see if we can do any type of content at Spartan Nationals later this month. Um, you know, Kyle Dake will be there. Yanni will be there. Um, David Carr will be there. So maybe we'll get the time to do something with them. If not, um, we could always, you know, tell Spartan, hey, send us out to <laughs> here. We want to do. Whole week hey, of content with this guy. I don't care if Kyle Dake's like, hey, let's get a workout in. I'm like, no, dude, I, I won't. Like, I'll lift some weights or go on a run or something. But You would not take the opportunity to wrestle bro, Kyle Dake in a I workout? Just, dude, he's about to wrestle in the Olympics, and no. I just it, imagine if you, like, just even, like, broke his pinky toe or something. Just I just wouldn't even risk it, man. No. And – I want to see him win a gold medal. That's dude. I couldn't do. I I'm just like nah, bro. Okay. In all after serious, he's done. After he's done. It's funny because in all this is one of those things that you like see in movies because Kyle Dake is one of your favorite wrestlers. And that just would be like a thing you see in a movie. Like your favorite wrestler who you like. <laughs> Honestly, I could. Oh, that's so bad to say, but I idolizing this guy <laughs> this whole time. You get then, the opportunity to meet him, train with him, and. <laughs> Yeah. And you, oh my goodness, you break something and he doesn't. No, no, you know, know what I will say? I would flow. Oh I'd flow real light and, and drill. But, but like, if, it, if I just go in live, like, and I know, I know, I know what people are saying. It's like, dude, you're worried about him. Like, you better worry about you. Yes, I'm just saying, though, imagine you, you know, take a bad shot or something, and your knee hits his foot or. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean. It's just... Just, no. Oh, I couldn't imagine. That's something you, like, see in a movie. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, anyways, hey, I mean, I love... I'm glad we went on a little tangent about jujitsu jitsu and uh, wrestling culture just a little bit. But, um, that's all. That's all that I've got for today, my guy. Same here. I can't think of anything that's coming up for wrestling. I guess we just continue to see how the portal unfolds. We'll see? have plenty of news on that. Whenever we can, you know, we'll we'll meet up and we'll we'll have something to talk about. And we are working on 
talking to some guys, you know, trying to get some interviews and stuff. But I think our biggest hurdle is right now, if we're being transparent, I don't think our cameras really work as well going live. Mm-hmm. So we just gotta we just gotta figure that out. But we are going to Spartan Nationals, like Adolfo said. If you're still watching this and you know you're you're uh, wanting to compete, your team, you're in high school, go sign up. Hundred percent. And as always, embrace the grind. Embrace the grind.